Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at object-oriented programming inside of C++. This video, as said in the title, is a beginner's tutorial, however it's still required for you guys to have a bit of a understanding of C++ and the basics of how it works. So if you guys don't know that yet, so please learn that and just come right back into this video. So without further ado, let's start this tutorial. Alright, so before I start coding, I'm just going to go over some object-oriented like fundamentals just so that you guys get a better understanding when we start coding. So what object-oriented programming does is it allows you to use reuse the exact same code but for different instances. Now you might think that's similar to a method and I'm going to tell you guys why in a minute. So let's suppose if I have a grocery store class and we're actually going to be building this right. Now there are several different things inside of a grocery store like there's going to be cabbage, strawberries, chocolates, and potentially a hundred other things. Now, it would be a huge pain if I had to constantly program something for every single item. Now, that's because I'm constantly rewriting code that's very similar. Instead, what we can do is we can create a class and put in every single, uh, every single object into the class and then do something with the class, such as return the cost. So with classes, you would specify the certain thing that you want inserted, which is going to be your object, so our object could be cabbage, and then with methods you could take the values and do something with them. So without further ado, let's begin coding. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is just create our class. So to make a class, just type class and the name, the name of your class. So make sure that when you're creating your class, make sure it's not in any sort of other method, such as the main method. Then wrap it, put two curly braces and a semicolon. So you might notice that this is a very similar to a method. And the reason why is because object oriented programming uh, takes methods and sort of abstracts upon it a bit more so we can constantly use them over and over again. All right, now currently, if I were to call upon this and to call upon it, all I have to do is just go grocery store like that. Now, uh, to run this, I'm just going to go make main, and then just go dot slash main. So currently nothing happens, that's because my class is empty. Now, no one likes an empty class, so let's work on constructors. What a constructor does is pretty straightforward. A constructor adds uh, basic functionality into our object when creating it. For example, in my grocery store class, I want some default values in there. The default values I might want are the name of the person, or the name of the item, the cost of the item, and if the person and the amount of money in the person's wallet. I'm doing this because later on I want to check to see if the person can afford the item. We're going to get to that in a bit later inside of this video. So to do this, to make a constructor, all you're going to do is just type the name of the class, and then you're going to add some arguments, like how you would in a normal method. So for grocery store, for example, I want a string for the item, item, an integer for the price, all right, and then an integer for the wallet, all right, and uh, that, that's it. Now, as you notice over here, there's now a red squiggly line. That's because I don't have any values in here that are required. So I'm going to put milk, for example. All right, and then I could add the cost for it being $15 and 20 bucks. Now, another thing I'm also gonna wanna teach you guys is how to name uh, different objects, right? Because we're not gonna have one object, we're gonna want multiple objects. So to name an object, you just write the name, like the, the class name, and then you're just gonna write the name of your variable. So I'm gonna call this Bob, all right? So in this case, I'm just thinking that Bob is the person who, uh, Bob is simply the person who, is the one that's buying the milk. So I'm just gonna make main and just run it. And as you can see, nothing happens, right? Uh, that's because we haven't been able, we haven't printed anything out to the screen yet. So to print something out to the screen, what we need to do is be able to access it. So let's do that right now. All right, so in order to access this, what we need to do is we need to take these variables like item, price, and wallet, and what we're going to want to do is put them, we're going to map, not map them, but set them equal to other variables that we've already created inside of our class. So currently there's no variables as such. So let's make some. 
I'm just going to make one for now, just to show you guys how this works. I'm going to create a string, and it's called item1. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to set item1's value and set that equal to the value of item. And then all I'm, yeah, and that, that's it. Now if I want to, you know, find that value, all I'm just going to do is print out bob.item1. Yeah, bob.item1. And just write end line. Okay, and now we're just going to make it. And I'm just going to actually clear that a bit. And as you can see, we now got milk. All right. Now, while, while printing out values is all fine and dandy, we actually want our classes to do some sort of work. In order for them to do some sort of work, we need to create other methods. So to create a method, all you're going to want to do is just go into your class and right after the constructor method, just add another method. You're going to write this method exactly the same as you would a regular method. So for example, I want to check, right? So uh, I'm just going to create a Boolean check. All right. And I don't have to put in any arguments because they're already specified here. All right. In fact, let me just put int price one and int wallet underscore money. All right. And I'm just going to set these three equal and then we're going to make our method. So item is equal to item one, price is equal to, or price one is equal to price. Item one is equal to item. Uh, and if you see an orange sign like this, that usually means that you're doing it correctly. But if you have some other extension and you see a change in color, then just know you're in the right direction. Okay, now in bool check, all we're gonna wanna do is just run two if statements, right? So if the item one is greater than the price one, just print out you cannot afford. And what what is it that you can't afford? You can't afford the item and just end the line. There's no, oh yeah, whoops. If price one is greater, yeah, okay. Wallet underscore money, okay. And then otherwise, all we're gonna want to do is just go out. You can afford the uh, item one and line. Okay, oh yeah, and this is item one, by the way. Okay, so, all right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, now let's just run this. So, so oh yeah, now, what, now, so see over here how we have this bool check, right? So this, uh, this function is not gonna run until we call upon it, like any normal function, right? So let's just go bob.check, all right? Now I'm just gonna clear this out and just go, Make main, non-void, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we need to return some values. Uh, return false and return true. Okay, now if I clear this, okay, and then I just go make main, and I just go dot slash main, it says you can't afford milk. But if I were to, you know, swap out the values, right? If I were to just go 20 and put 15, right? And go make main. Yeah, you can't afford milk. So that's it for today as to how to create objects and how to do some basic object-oriented programming inside of C++. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.